I'm Johnny Smith, AKA Car Pervert, and it's time to slow down for the Late Break Show. So I'm back at Zero EV, but I wanted to come and explore this car in detail because it's only just, well, it's not actually finished, is it, strictly speaking? Strictly speaking, no, it's still prototype testing. Nearly finished. Nearly. So MX-5 Mark II, it is Mark II, isn't it? What, 2.5, two? Don't say I never two, know. Don't say 2.5. Yeah. Because people expect me to know loads yeah. about MX-5s and I don't know loads. All I know is it's the best-selling two-seater. And it's yellow. Convertible in history and it's Arizona edition. Yes. But if you wanted to know in, in detail what's gone into this build, this conversion, you can go on to Zero EV's YouTube channel where Chris has expertly documented its entire transformation. I do love the MX-5, but now I hate it just a little bit. What, this started off as a what, a 1.8? A 1.6. 1.6, yep. okay. And it's known as being a really well-balanced, quite a simple car. So what, first of all, what made you want to do an MX-5? Um, they were cheap. <laughs> I've known MX-5s, I've actually had a couple of them. Okay. So it was a known car to start with, at least we knew what we were starting with. 50-50 yep. balance, yep. front engine, rear wheel drive. Yep. You can get loads of parts from. And the other thing is, there's so many people that love the MX-5, we knew we'd get the following on it. So we get the support from the community. Because it's a classic already. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth spending the time to do an MX-5 because you know in the future people are going to want it. Yeah. Rather than do something that they only made a couple of and will never get done again. Yeah. So basically this is like a test mule for you guys. Yeah, so anything front engine, rear wheel drive, this yeah. has sort of given us a really good test bed to work through. And it's actually got our new reduction gearbox in on the Hyper 9. Okay. That's a, just a single speed reduction. So it means you can put engine and gearbox in the tunnel, leaving the whole front free for batteries. Which is good, especially in a small car like this. Yeah, and you've got no other space. Yeah. So. Oh. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is it's a lot more open than I expected. I was expecting it to be crammed, and it's not crammed. No, it's really clean, to be honest, if yeah. I could say so ourselves. Um, yeah. We've got our 26 kilowatt hour battery pack with battery management system and all the contacts that were in that one box. In this box so here? Everything's in this box. So 26 kilowatt hours, right, okay, so that's... A bit... 100 mile range, okay. real, real day, I mean, if you did really nicely, you might get 120. Okay, yeah. Which is something like this is ideal. Yeah. Um, and we've managed to get it set back as far as we can, so it's not overhanging out the front. Um, we've got some crash protection. Is that what this is for? This is intentional? Uh, I'm going to say yes. In case you stuff it. In case you stuff it. But I suppose it's, it means there's scope to increase this if you ever wanted to. Yeah, if you ever needed to in the future. Yeah. And the big benefit with this is, as I've said, the, end, the gearbox and motor is in the tunnel. Down there. So it's not taking up So this the is space. batteries only. Batteries and, and only, the, yeah. And the control system. And then we've got our vacuum assist system there. So it's original braking, but we've got a vacuum assist unit there to keep the brakes working. Oh, which is okay. basically a little mini vacuum pump and a reservoir. And that just kicks in and out when the vacuum pressure drops. Right. So it's not on all the time. Yeah, which is what you hear on some of the other oh. old conversions. You've always got this buzzing thing running. Uh, and then all we, only other thing we've got then is our throttle cable that comes in here. And then our throttle pot is there. It's just a cable pull. That's nice. Throttle pot. He didn't, he didn't really want me to come and drive it today because he said it's not quite finished yet. So there's a few little, you know, bits of overspray here and there. And, and he desperately wanted to paint the front bumper. He didn't want me to mention it, but I'm going to mention <laughs> it because I know Chris is a perfectionist. So this is in the final stages of completion. Uh, we've got a prototype gearbox in this at the moment, so it's not as quiet as the finished article will be. Yeah. But it's it's still going to give you full performance and stuff. So, so let's good. let's talk performance. So volts, just over 100 volts. Kilowatt hours is 20, 26. Then the motor is a single motor. So the motor is single motor Hyper 9. So it's 80 kilowatts, which is about 120 brake horsepower, okay. and 230 newton meters of torque. Okay, that sounds all right. Maximum 8,000 RPM. 8,000 RPM, and then there's a little... There's a reduction gearbox in the middle. Yeah, so how big then, are they? Uh, that. Okay. It's as narrow as the Hyper 9, so it's just basically you end up with one unit that long, which is the motor and the gearbox. That seems... Now it comes out to a yoke, which just goes straight into the prop shaft. Okay, so it still has a prop? Still has a prop. So the gearbox is a 1.8 to 1 reduction. 
yep. which is a standard reduction to our standard rear, rear diff then. In the so back. MX-5 rear end. MX-5 rear end, exactly as standard as it was, no modification. And then underneath here, where the fuel tank was, we've got charger and DC to DC with some fuses, uh, which does mean when we put on the scales, we're still at 50-50. Are you? Well, we're at 50.2 and 49.8 or something. So we're oh, so as good a damn at 50-50. So you've kept that we've kept original, it original balance. Which was a bit of a concern a lot of our sort of YouTube viewers had. Yes. Are we going to keep it 50-50? And we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stayed. Surprisingly, I'm a bit quite surprised how close it actually is, and it stayed 50-50. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's come out really well. Does it still have a boot? It still has a boot. Look at that. As was. As was. As was. You've even got, still got a spare wheel hidden under here. That's amazing. So, so actually, you've done a pretty good job of kind of keeping it. You won't know really. No. Um, and then just there, you have. Tada! Ah. Oh. Type two. Yep. So that's in the original aperture. Original aperture. Uh, and then we're a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour charger. So four hours full charge. So that's your standard home standard charging home, 32 unit. 32 amp, like you yep. have on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven kilowatt, I think, the class is, aren't they, on the type two yes. homes? Is there the option of being able to charge faster if you wanted to on this car? Not on this one because of the voltage. Right. So you need to be over 200 volts to do fast charging with yep. the UK network that yep. there is. Some of them do slightly less, but they're really hard to come by. Right. So this is more of a city sort of car, I suppose. Yes. Sunday driver. I mean, yeah, yeah. 120 points. miles. It's weekend thing. Yeah, weekend thing. But ideal for built-up cities and stuff. You, the weight distribution is almost the same. What about the weight? 1,070 kilograms. What is the original? I think 980. 40, 50 kilos in it. That's it's that's, a one person. That's a sat, person. Yeah, that's a not even a big person sat no. in the seat. Yeah, or some luggage in the back. Okay, that's so really good. It's really good. Yeah, it's mainly down to the range though. So if we went for more range, then obviously you're going to be over on your weight. Yeah. So something like this, you've, you're going to have to stay lower range to keep your weight the same. So if someone's watching this and they go, I've got an MX-5 uh, and I'd love to EV it, but I would want more range, you could say it is possible, yep. but you'd have to put maybe either some batteries in there yeah. or and a, a little bit more bigger there. pack there. Yeah. And those... But then you're going to end up adding, say, 150 kilos to it. So you're still going to be within its limits of the car on yes. paper, but you're obviously going to be heavier, which is not ideal. We've got regenerative braking as well, but we've got to be careful how much we do because obviously it's only on the rear. So you don't want too much braking on the rear and making it unbalanced. You don't want to lock the back up, yeah. do you? So there's some regenerative braking. Okay. Well, I am not an MX-5 aficionado, but I'm going to say it looks pretty much stock apart from there's no lever, there's no a knob. There's now a knob. Yes, there's <laughs> now a knob. And that is, is that the only difference I can see here? Uh, we have different gauges. Oh, they're all different. Oh, they're all different. Okay. So this is actually a set, speed hut setup, basically they've supplied to us. Okay. Um, and what we've done is we've changed it out. So we've got amps instead of R R RPM. Okay. Uh, and then we've got motor temperature and battery temperature, and we've got state of charge in the middle. So they're the same sort of layout as original. But yeah, it foxed me. I didn't notice. But they are. EV specific, specific now, um, with also some cool little extra things like uh, if you're charging the green light flashes, little things like that, okay. and some extra temperature warning lights just to make it a bit better for people. And it has a low state of charge gauge, so when you get to 10%, that light comes on and says you're getting low. Yeah. So just all the little bits that people would expect on their petrol vehicle. Yeah. I've tried to keep everything as standard as possible, and yeah, get the nice. It's just R, N, and D. Yep. What I like about that is it's faithful to the MX-5. There's no touch screens and fancy pants stuff because MX-5s aren't, no. are they? What kind of um, zero to 62 are we talk to? We're currently at about eight seconds, roughly. Okay. And we're maxing out just over 80 miles an hour okay. with the current setup. There is a little bit more tuning to do, but that's sort of a comfortable performance, I think. Yeah. And because yeah. you've not got gear changes, it seems a lot quicker than it is. Yeah. I think that's what people seem to forget, is you've just got instant power all the time. Yeah. Also, because it's an MX-5 and there's a massive following, they've sold millions of them, there's loads of aftermarket bits available. Yeah. So loads. if you wanted to, you could go to town on yeah. extra stiff suspension, bigger brakes again. Yep. So at this stage, with this car, you're not necessarily trying to sell a kit to people as yet. As yet, no. If we had a number of people, yeah. then we'd probably do a run, a production run on kits. Yeah. But so it's gauging interest. It's gauging interest. Um, yeah. This was mainly the, the, the test bed so we could do classic British vehicles. Yeah. 
like MGBs and Spitfires. This gives a really good base to move into those now. There's, and there's loads of them. Yeah, and there's loads of really, really high-end little niche garages around the UK and Europe, which are, all they do is those niche old Yeah, vehicles. like I just do Triumph Stags. Yeah. And okay. they do them beautifully. So we're trying yeah. to enable them to, to then offer an EV converted version of their already spotless. Their specialist vehicle. Yeah. That's yeah. a great idea. I'm going to take it for a drive now, Chris. Yep. This is the bit where I say thanks, but bye. <laughs> Obviously, I've got to be in that seat for that. Otherwise, it's just weird and pointless. This just feels pleasantly MX-5. Zero EV hasn't forgotten the point, the attraction of these cars. And that's a compliment indeed, because what it means is it hasn't tried to add a load of power that it's not capable of handling. Yes, you could do that. Absolutely, you could do that. And then you change the recipe. <laughs> One wheel peel. But of course, you can put a limited slip diff in it. Some MX-5s were specced with them. We can buy an aftermarket one. It's just got that lovely body control and that balance that MX-5s have out of the box. And it doesn't feel any heavier. Normally EVs give away their mass quite early on. No, this isn't doing that. And that's because it's not really any heavier than the original car. The MX-5 was never a fast, powerful car, but what it was is exceptionally playful and balanced. And that's what this is. In fact, if I had earphones on or earplugs in, it would just feel like an automatic MX-5. But this is possibly the only automatic MX-5 that I would recommend you buying. Now you're probably going, Johnny, this is all lovely, but talk to me. Talk to me about money. Turkey. Well, Chris says a kit like this would cost in the region of £20,000, including the 20% VAT. I feel like something's missing, though. No true MX-5 owner goes anywhere without a cat. It felt completely MX-5, and I mean that in a complimentary way, Good. because it felt just like an MX-5 has done. It felt no heavier than an MX-5. It didn't behave differently, didn't grip in, a, in an unusual way. It was really, really good. What, what it means is I don't think you've spoilt the recipe, which is probably what people are always scared of with cars like this. Especially with the electric conversion side of things. Yeah because it can be really weighty in the wrong place. And I, that was the first thing is usually with an EV, when you start to push it, you can feel where that mass is. It wasn't there. Brilliant. It's really good. Really pleased with it. Bloody hell. Yeah. No, I enjoyed <laughs> it. I think it was a lot. It's just nice, to be honest, it's nice to be back out in an MX-5. And it's also nice to see, knowing that you've used the components you've used because you thought it doesn't need a long range necessarily. It doesn't need to have a sledgehammer of power because you're just trying to replace the equivalent piston power yep. with EV power. And yes, you could change that if you wanted a 500 horsepower one. Of course you can do that. But I, I just, I've really enjoyed it. I thought it's great. And it just goes to show what can be done. And I know this is pretty much a prototype for you. So, yes. And I've never thought actually the MX-5's best bit was the engine. So to me, I wouldn't miss that, but I fully expect to be trolled now. <laughs> So I suppose first thing we'll start with is the Tesla selection of oh. drive units. See, you probably get blasé about seeing all these drive units just sitting on racks. Yeah, I remember the first time we bought them in and we had a cup, like two or three, and it was like, oh, it's amazing, we've got a couple of drive <laughs> units, and now I think there's probably at least 20 scattered around is in the workshop, yeah. And then how we get them <laughs> in that state. Uh, but we'll strip them, bearings, retest them all, put yep. them on the dyno, check everything's good, and then they leave us, leave us all tested and good for another you know, 100,000 miles or so. That's incredible. 
So okay. we're buying in eights, tens at a time, wow. a couple of pallets loads from companies. Um, and, and Tesla then, won't sell a brand new motor? No. So these are all salvage? All salvage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all salvage motors. What, what's going this is, you've So this is, this is a broken inverter, just so, yeah. <laughs> it's not how we keep them stored. Um, <laughs> are they still the best motor? I mean, you got For the only... money, yeah. Yeah. And the amount of abuse we've given these motors over the years and testing and pushing them to their limits in the skyline, these are still the, our go-to solution. There is going to be other motors coming along, like probably the Taycan motor and stuff, but they're going to be in such low numbers yeah. that they're never really going to make it into the conversion market. And with the Model 3 stuff coming out as well and the performance you're getting out of them, I think Tesla will stay at the, the go-to motor-wise. I don't yeah. think they will battery-wise because the new batteries are difficult to work with. So a bit like in the 50s when Chevy brought out the small block V8. Yes. And then people took the what was a brand new V8 and put it in older cars. Yep. The hot rod yes. was born. Yeah. You're basically hot rodding Elon's bits. That just sounds yeah. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> do you do stuff other than Tesla motors? We do. Um, we've got the Hyper 9 stuff, which obviously everyone's used for years. We do yeah. some bits with the Hyper 9, but we've actually got a new range coming out, which we're calling the Zonic, which is still up for debate. So we've got a 120 and a 180. So we've got 120 kilowatt and an eight, 180 kilowatt hour, a okay. kilowatt version. Yeah. Um, and that's going to come in a sort of a couple of variants. The 120 is a motor with inverter on the back, very similar to sort of Hyper 9. Yeah. Um, but it's 350 volts nominal, so it's high voltage. Wow. And yeah, we've got the 180, which is same voltage, but it has like our, our, our new gearbox as such, which does prop drive. So front engine, rear wheel drive cars, absolutely perfect to put it in the tunnel. Yeah. So that's our 180 that's going to be coming out as well. And this is your own development? This is our own stuff, yeah. Okay. But that's what the MX-5 is for, that's sort of testing the gearbox and some of the other bits for that system. The, these cars look like they're being restored, but in, but in this instance you're not restoring no, them? No, it looks like we've got loads of cars we're converting, but actually they're all in relevant stages of being prototype test vehicles. Yeah. Motor one side. A motor. Central gearbox and then inverter on the other side. Yeah. They're a big thing though, aren't they? Yes, but then when you can push on the sports 650 brake horsepower out of one, and you consider how big a engine and turbo you'd have to have on a combustion engine. Yeah, and what's the weight of that? Uh, 130 ish kilos, roughly. See, that's not a lot. So it's not that much. That's not, a lot. not that much at all. Wow. Okay, what's next? What's next? Danger, high voltage, let's go in. <laughs> oh, it feels like a VIP club situation, you know, where you've got your own separate little area, you get your special drink. So this is a battery build room, basically. So okay. This is where we basically assemble our battery packs. We've got our rigs to help the guys well, make our lives easy. So. And what's this going into? So this is going in... Is it secret? <laughs> this is going in Porsche, Porsche 911s. 911s? So this is our new 911 kits, basically, um, which are doing the, the old G-body, I think they call it, and then the 964s. Yeah. Um, so basically it's a standardized kit with a couple of tweaks and it yeah. fits in, in both models, basically. So it's a replacement for the air-cooled? Yeah. But it's a complete bolt-in, so it picks up on all the original engine mounts. So That's you've, you've not modified anything. You've dropped the engine in a gearbox. Yeah. And this this has basically some metal work that comes across here. It picks up on the gearbox mounts that would have been there. Yeah. Test the drive unit, and then the rear here picks up on the original rear mounts. Um, so reversible. Yes. Yeah. Completely reversible. You don't cut looms. You don't modify any part of the car. Yeah. Also means when it comes to UK legislation, you've not made any chassis modifications. The point system in the UK is, as soon as you do chassis mods, you've five points gone. And you've got eight points in total. So right. by doing it that way, you, you go nowhere near your point system. Yeah, yeah. DVLA is happy. It's just a logbook change. Yeah. And that's it. And um, it's good from, I guess, the, the, if you ever want to change your mind or the car changes hands. Yes. And you think how much these Porsches are now, they're just going up and up in value. The mm -hmm. last thing you want to do is to cut it, to modify it, and then 10 years down the line go, oh, there's new tech out. I want to change it. You didn't need to do that. Asking for a little trouble. This is very neat. Um, so this is an uh, aluminium box. Oh no, steel. Steel. We looked at aluminium, but once you go thicker with the aluminium and all that stuff, there's just not a huge amount in, in it. Yeah. So built into here is all the basically all the high voltage junction box system is all inside of it. Battery management system inside of it. So you've not got anything external. It's this sealed box. Once it's in, unless you lift the engine bay, yeah, you can't, you can't tell. tell. No, no, it doesn't stick down underneath at all. So if you look at the car visually, you apart from missing the exhaust, you'd have you'd have no idea that's been converted. Brilliant. Um, and then that one fits in the front uh, where the fuel tank was. Yeah. So your, your spare wheel still fits where it was. So actually, once you put your engine, your cover back over, you've still got your original frunk, as they call it. So 53 kilowatt hours. Yeah, in total. In a 911, range of about? 
we're saying 180, but that's real world. We know it's more. Okay. That's what, we're, that's what we're putting on paper. And ability to rapid charge? Uh, yes, we've got, we will have CCS fast charging, so we can do up to, in theory, 120 kilowatts an hour. Wow, CCS. So we're, we're sort of saying, you know, 80% charge within an hour, and that's plays it safe. That's yep. sort of a, a repeatable thing. Um, CCS that's, is, that's news, yeah. that's news. The ability to CCS on a, yeah, it's, on a, it's on a not, retrofit. Yeah, it's EV not been kit. done before. That'll be available for other conversions as well, not just this. Not just 911s? Not just 911s, it will be if you're running certain BMSs and you've got liquid cooling, then you can run CCS. So if I order my 911 kit today, yeah. and it has today's tech in it, yes. but in two years I've done X miles in it and I'm thinking, or maybe I want more power, maybe I want yeah. more range. The, the, the chances are we can take it out and actually just replace the modules themselves that's rather good. than having to rebuild everything. Everything and change yeah. the entire yeah. structure. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Spal cooling fans, I've, I've used them before, yes. they're good. Um, so we've got dual cooling, so batteries, motor. Yeah. But then what we've done is we've stuck with off-the-shelf bits. So these are actually out of VWs, like the Mark 6, 7s, they sit in the, in the side. Yeah. So the most common things we're trying to keep standardised. Mm -hmm. So any service garage can replace a radiator. Yeah. You don't have to find an EV specialist somewhere the other side of the country to you to, to swap it's out a radiator. It's just a, a golf. So if you're watching this and you're a company that wants to start converting classic cars, not even classics, used cars to EV, mass-produced, popular used cars, consider these guys. Because they've been doing it a little while. They know what they're doing. And I'm going to get hundreds of emails. I wouldn't say that. That's, you're making out that I'm an influential, <laughs> popular person. That's you're trying. I'm trying, it, and it pays to try, apparently. Uh, next room, which room? It's the futuristic zone. Bloody love the crystal maze. Now, I know that's yours. Yes. And it's got an exhaust. And it's keeping an exhaust. Is it? Yes. So this is the thing, you're obviously, I know you're into cars in general, but this is not gonna get the EV treatment. Not this one. I might do one at some point. You've totally got to do one at but some point. But I'll have to buy a, Bit of a wreck, I think, and start from scratch. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is this is nice. This is nice. So, judging by the rear suspension, this doesn't have an engine in. This is stripped, ready to convert. So, this is actually a nine six four, but it's backdated. Wide body, but old bumpers. Old bumpers. Old grills. All of the chrome trim. Wow. And the Italian leather interior, and yeah, it's stunning. All the trim and trimming, shall we say? And this is going to have what the Tesla based. Yeah, so the, the kit we looked at, Yeah, that's what's going in this, basically. That's going to be really good. Yeah, and quick. And quick. So about 200 mile range, 180 to 200 yeah. mile range. And you're looking at 450-ish brake. So sub four and a half seconds, zero to 60. But it's the torque as well. It's the torque. We know insane. it can do less. We know it can do a lot quicker zero to 60s, but for supply to customers, it's got to be sensible. Because <laughs> these were scatty enough as it they was. They were scatty enough as it is, yeah. yeah this is great. That's, that's a bit nice. What's that from? It says Tesla on it. It does. But it's actually from a B-Class Mercedes. And on paper, 28 kilowatt hours, but actually they're 36 kilowatt hours the pack. They're just restricted. Really restricted? Yes, really, really restricted. The G-Wiz fits four of those modules in as they are, so, as they come. So you can upgrade a G-Wiz like that with just and have a few what, bits and 12 that. kilowatt hours just over yeah. G-Wiz, which wow. is ideal. I nearly hot rodded a G Wiz for lols, and I, and I valued my life. And I was like, nah, I, the G Wiz is, I mean, these are far superior to G Wizzes. I'm used to small, fast cars, but the G Wiz, no. I can found that Johnny has a standard here. The G Wiz is just the. Oh, that's G, the tipping there's point, two is things it? that I won't go below Morris Marina, which is ironically, I've Out seen there, my outside yeah. there. The, the last thing I was expecting to see outside Zero EV, and G Wiz. I just can't. You're tempted to, you're going to play with one of these, aren't you? Is this, yeah. is this going to be? This, a... this one has, we've sort of started, but it's finding the time now. Outlander, rear motor. Right. In there. And a Golf GTE hybrid pack. Okay. And that should just about fit. That's probably and then 100 quite brake horsepower. 100 brake horsepower in that? Because <laughs> it's not classed as a car, is it? It's a quadricycle. Yeah. You need to do it. You need to find time. Yeah, well, he needs to find time. He can stop buying stuff <laughs> off Zero EV. These are Tesla batteries, aren't they? Yes. Still desirable, though. Still very desirable. Yeah. Um, yep. The issue we found for doing kits is trying to find Tesla packs. 
because yeah. everyone wants them. All the solar guys want them. All the little converters want them. Yeah. And with the Hyper 9 systems, wants five of them. Yeah. So as much as they're really good, they're also really hard to get hold of in large quantity. Which is why you're developing yeah. other stuff. I want to know what's going on in that chamber there, Chris. What is going on? You're not allowed in. Aren't I? No. Is that a secret? That's a secret. It's, well, it's, that's CCS development. I can see the plug. Yeah, so there's a CCS plug and there's a yep. big battery pack and a CCS fast charger. Which is great because, you know, for me, especially, you know, having a classic car that can CCS charge. Well, it means you can run a smaller pack. Yeah. That's the other benefit is you don't have to put the car over weight and you don't have to spend the extra, I don't know, five, six, seven thousand pounds on batteries that you're, never, you're only going to use once Rather to go a long just, distance. Yeah. So you it can means, just top it up quicker. Yeah. yeah. So it means that car that can do 100 miles on a charge is actually perfect for all your round town stuff. And if you do want to do a longer trip, you can fast charge it yeah. super quick anyway. So you don't yeah. necessarily need to be lugging around extra pile of batteries everywhere yeah. for no reason. This is a Model 3. That's a Model 3? Yep. Yeah. Bit of a mess, obviously. <laughs> sort of complete wow, mess. This yeah, was sort yeah. of something we messed around with, took apart, looked at how it was designed, um, and it's just sort of sat here ever since. Um, we have got some dashboard bits for the Model 3, which we've got something coming out, but I'm not telling you about. Um, really? For the actual Model 3. Um, Don't tell me an actual speedo that you can look at that's maybe, in the line of vision. Maybe. Just going to put that maybe, out there. Yeah, possibly. Possibly, <laughs> it might, possibly it might be nice and round. Um, oh, wow. And have some retro sort of skins. Really? Maybe. But you can't tell me, Chris. <laughs> I can't obviously. say too much Yeah, about yeah, 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 you can't tell me. <laughs> These are quite difficult to use because they're four long modules inside. But I don't know how long it's going to be until they stop doing modules and they just do direct to pack. Yeah. And it's just one solid pack. Model S's are going to probably transition across at some point to yeah. the Model 3 style, and then there's going to be no Model S batteries left. Yeah. Um, and we can start getting everyone in the market into the, the newer modules now to start transitioning away from Tesla long term. Uh, we've heard that maybe Tesla set it up to allow it to do battery to grid. <sighs> there's talk of it around, I don't know how true it is, but if that's the case and someone does hack this, mm. potentially you might just take it as a complete unit. I was going to say, I could buy one of those and vertically put it in yes. a cupboard. Yeah. So and that, that time will come, I think. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a matter of time. It's to weird, isn't it, how these things happen, how, how these things evolve? Got, but this is sort of some rough design phase. So that is a, that is a laser scanned engine bay, is it? Yeah, so, the front um, end of a 911. Of yeah, because we can just do a, a production run then of a batch of, say, 10 of them. Yeah. Purchase it, get shipped to them, say, in a couple of weeks. They spend 60 hours, something like that, converting the car and done. Yeah. There's sort of... And you haven't got to break the news that you've got to grind off yeah. the brackets for the fuse box or anything yeah. weird like that. It stays as it yeah. was, yeah. which is the main thing. So 911 is a big kit for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, there's so many of them and they're quite high value. Yeah. So it's a really good one to start with yeah. to perfect the system, I suppose. And there's going to be lists of other cars, I expect. Oh, you've got Once a, we get this system you've got there a hit list of... and we get the production side in, it means we can bring costs down and we buy in large volume. I'm yeah. hoping we can start looking at then some more of the budget vehicles long term. Yeah. Like mass production budget stuff, but that is you know, going to be at least a year or so away, okay. I'd expect. This is this thing we can't talk about. Um, this is the thing we can't talk about, okay. Yeah. This, this, is, yeah, this is all stuff we don't want to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this that's the like, steering column. Yeah, no, that like slots into there. You can't show me any of this, no, obviously. Okay. Yeah, but you, you can't see any of this, obviously. <laughs> You can't see. And then you look in your Model 3 and you'll have like a nice... Yeah. Oh, wow. Obviously, this will be all billet aluminium and it'll be like the iPhone screen. So that'll be like a just a glass bezel. There won't be any of this. This oh. is just for prototyping. I see, I see, um, I see. It'll be a really nice... Just a glass circle. Plug and play add-on. So. But like I say, but can't, like I say can't, can't, can't show you that, so <laughs> sorry. It's just too interesting for me. I just love it. It's mad, isn't it? Like 15 years ago, having this sort of technology in a small business was out of the question. Out of the question. And now you've got 3D laser scanners, CNC machines, plasma cutter there, and this. You can do it all from a quiet farmyard. So I've noticed this one when we were in the workshop, Merck SL. Presumably this is in for a bit of surgery. Yes. So this is actually going to be a bolting kit for, the, for the SL range. Uh, but this is going to take a while because everything has to be perfect. And this is a car where the values of, like the Porsche, they've hit a certain level where owners will yes. entertain a, um, a conversion. Yeah. I mean, and everything with this will be full bolting, fully reversible, no cutting, nothing. You keep all your original dashboard bits and everything so you can always revert it back because the value in these is with matching engine numbered cars. Yeah. So if someone keeps their engine somewhere in storage and yeah. then they can always either sell it with the engine as converted or yeah. convert it back if the value goes 
through the roof even more. And you guys have bought what a pro basically a, yeah. a, a restoration project. It's, it doesn't matter if you scratch it because the yeah. paint, frankly, the paint's is quite coming bad. off anyway. Yeah, it's quite bad. <laughs> I don't want to ruin his concrete. Oh, this, the electric Skyline drift car. I haven't forgotten about it. I'm just saving it for another video. You see, I've got a friend who I think might appreciate it. Stay tuned. As I said before, if you haven't already been on Zero EV's YouTube channel, you should really have a look. It documents every single nut and bolt of the conversion of this particular car. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, why haven't you? Come on, it's just cruel. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Johnny Smith, this has been The Late Break Show, and that is Chris in Zero EV. Thank you.